Hey everybody, welcome back in. My name is Matt, Cryptic if you prefer, and today we're doing more topology stuff. So, and if you watched the last video, we went over kind of like right angle topology. Um, today we're going to be going over extrusion topology. So if you're creating an object with like panels or anything like that, those panels, you want to figure out how to work that geometry in and then localize it. That way it's not traveling all the way through. This is what we're going to kind of work on for this one. So at the same thing with the last video, the tutorial files are in the link down below. So if you want to download those and kind of play with them, it's a good place to learn. If you want to make them yourself, you could do that as well. But yeah, if you haven't yet, please make sure you like and subscribe because it does help my channel. And if you are interested in supporting me on Patreon, the link is in the description as well. It's a great place. There's free models and pretty soon some free courses. So, so with all that out of the way, let's go ahead and get into the lesson. All right, so again, if you watched the last lesson, you're going to be kind of familiar with the way I set this up, but here we have um, three objects with three extrusions. First one is just a base mesh with no added support or anything like that. You can see we had three. It's gross looking. We don't like that. Second one is kind of the traditional way that a lot of people are shown how to support their models, which is dragging edge loops or dragging cuts through your model until you have all of your corners nice and sharp. And you can see it gives us a really good result. But the issue is, is that we've got, again, this really nasty, gnarly, just too much geo flowing out of each corner, because when we go to subdivide this, I'll show you what this kind of looks like. Uh, and then we have our third result, which is the correct result, the way that we want to actually do this. You can see that it looks exactly the same as the other one. Minus the fact that I didn't support the top enough, but um, that's fine. That's not a big issue. Uh, but looks basically the same as the other one, but the topology is much cleaner. So let's take a look at this uh, subdivision wise. All right. So if we look at this subdivided, so same thing with three smooth, you're going to see that like there's no support on the first object. This is what we're avoiding. This is what we don't want to have, because if you're modeling panels on something like a spaceship or uh, a tank or something, you want to make sure those panels are nice and sharp because in reality an extruded panel like that is going to be a sharp piece of like cut steel that'll be laid on top of something or you know pulled out of another piece of steel so if we look at the second example this is where you see the issue so so while yes technically this works if we just turn on our edge here we'll look at this you can see how dense this is this is what we're trying to avoid because looking at this the more we subdivide this, the thicker these little sections are going to be and the more distortion they could potentially cause. Plus, they make your model really heavy and it's honestly just not a good thing to work with or look at. So this is what we're looking to avoid. So now if we look at this one, you can see how our geo is nice and evenly kind of distributed throughout the model. So everything kind of starts flowing back out. Technically, with this example, you can kind of see that we have this little five star hole here. You do really want to avoid that, but on an example like this, it doesn't really matter all that much, but I'll go over in a further video on how to kind of split those apart and get those working right. But this, for all intents and purposes, is what we're looking for. This nice, clean mesh that's extruded that doesn't have a lot of geo uh, sticking out on both edges. You can see the clear difference. And again, if we select this one, right now it's sitting at 7,000, or right now it's sitting at 74,000 faces. This one, is at 4,160. So you can see that's the clear difference here is we are trying to work to reduce our polygon counts while still creating the same shape that we want, all while making sure our model stays efficient and not messy like the secondary one. And you know, if you support your models like this, technically, yes, it's, it, it's okay. But reality is, is that when you're looking to kind of improve your skills, when you're looking to kind of show off what you can do, this is kind of like a rookie thing. It's kind of a rookie mistake. Uh, and I get it. This is the way I was taught in college. So the place where I should have learned not to do this is where I learned to do this. So that's just something to keep in mind. It does happen and people get taught this way. It's just kind of something that you got to unlearn later on. If you didn't get taught this way, then kudos to you because that's awesome. But uh, let's go ahead and do a quick example on how each one of these kind of works. So we'll pop our example open here. So we have our three here and move this right here, we'll focus on this. So again, with this one, we're not gonna do anything. We can toggle between three and one. You can see how just gross and ugly that gets. And then we're gonna do this one kind of the traditional way that I was taught. So go insert edge loop. And so traditionally I'd go through and just, you know, support these every which way possible. And you can see 
how much geometry we're technically adding to this and how we're just really causing this to get super dense. This is not what we want to do. Like, yeah, the result is good. You know, it's clean. Oops. But reality is, is it's 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 still kind of messy. So. So, yeah, looking at that, I, you know, it's just it's not the right way to do it, because, again, if we subdivide this, if we go mesh and smooth. The more we subdivide this, the thicker and uglier these lines are going to get. And we're just trying to avoid that. So let's look at this guy. So what we're going to do is we want to figure out how we're going to cut this. So there are a couple of ways you can technically do this. You could drag your edge loops in and then merge them all together. Uh, I tend to not do that just because it seems kind of like redundant and annoying. So what I do is I go to my multi-cut tool. I'll go and usually what I'll do is I'll hold shift when I click here and I'll start at 80 or 20%, just depending on what side I'm starting on. And I will continue that throughout. So you'll notice that you switch between 80 and 20% as you kind of rotate around the model. That's totally okay. There's nothing wrong with that. It's still the same distance and space. We're just carrying this around the model. And we'll switch back to 80 here. 80. And then we'll terminate that. Okay, so we've just kind of isolated that. So you can already see when we do that, it gives us a much like it, it's already starting to support itself. So we could save that. And so now we need to figure out how we're going to use this to actually reduce topology. So we have these corners, we've created triangles. So what we're going to do is we're going to click these and we're just going to merge them. And they'll merge to the center. Same thing here. And just go around real quick. And then what we can do is we can select each one of these corners. And we're going to scale them out. So from here, we get that nice little supported angle. And then when you smooth it again, you're still getting that same nice kind of supported result. So what do we do next? Well, now that we've done that, we've kind of created this like extra kind of square here. So we could avoid this. You could technically keep this if you wanted to. But what we're going to do is we're going to add an additional ring of support here. So we're going to go multi-cut and we're going to cut to the corner. Cut to the corner, cut to the corner, and cut to the corner. Okay. So what that's going to do is just give us that little additional layer of support. So from here, we're going to go select these. Control delete, that clears those. And that gives us this nice quad. So we have these weird rectangles that we don't necessarily want. So we're gonna go ahead and divide those. That's where our little corner supports are gonna come in handy. So we're gonna go insert edge loop or multi-cut if you'd like, and we're gonna support. So generally what I'll do is I'll put close to the corner. So we get that nice supported edge. And then what I'll do is I'll just turn on my transform constraints to edge and I'll just kind of slide these out and make these kind of perfect. Um, you could also scale them out however you want to. However your workflow kind of works is how you'll want to do this. So again, we're not going to terminate that little five point because this isn't a whole model. So if we were working with a whole model, we would find a way to terminate that into the mesh and then like actually work it in. But for this example, we're not worried about it. When I do some later examples on some more like complex models, we'll start talking about that. Okay, so you can see now we have our support ring, our outer support ring, our inner support ring, which is going to support that kind of close knit geometry. And then we have our corner rings. So with that, we haven't really added much topology. So we're going to go one last time. We're going to do an insert edge loop or multi-cut, whatever you want to do. We're going to just add two support loops there and one here and smooth. And I think what I'll do actually, because it's still smoothing a little weird, is we'll add one more down here. Um, that'll just kind of keep that flat. So if we turn off our wireframe now, you can see we've got that nice solid extrusion with very little um, added geometry. And then if we go mesh tools, or we go to mesh, smooth, you can see how this subdivides really well. And you can just kind of keep going with it, and it stays really clean. The only place that we want to 
Oops. The only place that we want to see um, thick, like geometry, is when we're looking at this and we're looking at our, our sharp edges. So technically wherever you have a sharp corner is where you want to see that. So here is a good example on how you'll start to see like it bleeds out, but then it starts to correct. This is something you're going to deal with. It's going to happen. But the reality is, is you want to reduce this because a lot of people will just leave it and let it run through their entire model. And that's what we're trying to avoid here. We don't want that running through our entire model, our entire model. We want that to be a localized kind of uh, distortion. So this is generally the workflow I will follow when I'm doing like panels or extruded surfaces, anything like that, just to kind of keep my topology localized and keep it from like going all the way across my model and looping around and causing many like a bunch of different issues. Again, this is what your clean geo is going to look like. You can see such a clear difference between this one and this one. Um, there's just so much less going on. And this is just generally one of the ways that you can kind of refine your workflow and figure out how you're going to kind of pull your geometry back a little bit. You're not creating a bunch of edges that are going to fly through your model that you have to figure out how to manage later. This just allows you to do this, get it extruded, and then keep the rest of your model nice and clean. So if this were like, for instance, like a panel on a spaceship, you the rest of your panel would look nice and quadded out like this. So you'd have just all these little generic little quads. And then you'd have this one section that pops out. But when you smooth it, everything is sharp, clean and to the point. But yeah, I mean, that's kind of it. That's kind of how we would uh, want to go about approaching this and how we'd want to just kind of clean this up. I do hope you guys are finding these videos helpful. I'm still working on a couple more because there are more shapes that are a little bit more difficult to deal with, such as like cylinders and extruding on spheres and things like that. So as we move through this series of videos, we're going to go over different types of geometry and then we're going to move it into kind of like live practice. So we will be working on like a tank or a ship or something, whatever I'm working on at the time. We'll do some live work on that to show how I'll kind of work through and terminate things. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please make sure to give it a thumbs up and then follow the channel because there will be more. And again, if you'd like to, you can support me on Patreon. It's one of the best places to support me and you get some free stuff out of it, which is really cool. But with that said, everybody, thank you so much for watching. I will see you all in the next video.